Welcome to GS Style Peeps. And this time I've got Mercedes Vito 2019. Uh, the taxi, as you can see. <laughs> and today's mission is to upgrade the factory head unit, like that. To an aftermarket head unit, like that. This is the DMX 9720XDS. And this is a hell of a unit. This is not your cheap, cheap stuff whatsoever. If you want to Google it, this is the, this is the number. Uh, see for yourself. You don't have to explain a lot. It's got built-in sat navs and everything and whatnot. So we have dial bear reels and. All sorts of things, and uh, half of the stuff I've never even seen on the head unit before. But that's not a problem. We'll be installing, as you can see, this is the DAB aerial. Uh, sorry, not the DAB, the GPS. So we'll have to find a place for that. Mike, apparently, this head unit doesn't work without certain parts being installed, which is another new thing to me. <laughs> Crazy, <clears throat> but um, but yeah. So basically, I'm gonna set this up. Let's get down, stripping that old one out and all the stuff that goes with it, and let's proceed installing the new one. Right then, peeps. Uh, as you can see, I've cleared that part all up uh, just because I'm gonna need access to places so first of all how the hell do you remove this fascia well it's quite easy to be fair uh, this whole thing comes out in one piece so you just start cleaning it up from the top or the bottom whichever what you prefer and you just feel it around, pushing it, wiggling it. It's the vent parts that are always the worst parts. There you go. Like that. It sounds like you're snapping everything, but you're actually not. Like so. Yo! So, then what we have? The heater panel, traction control, and that part. Off. Off. Enough! And obviously what we've got here is the factory aux. <coughs> the factory aux is just not needed. And the uh, USB. Which I'm gonna try and retain because I have done one of these similar head units before and I installed the aftermarket USB in there <laughs> but that's gonna be for later head unit head unit is quite easy oh, we've got T T20 or T25 looks like somebody's already had the head unit now that screw wasn't screwed down properly so just pop all these four and you're good That all you gotta left to do is, is just pull this. 
<laughs> well, that's a, <laughs> that's a funny one. That's a funny one indeed. How easy this was. Just now. How easy did this all happen? And then just pray the little things. And you're good to go. And that's it. That's all the screen. That's what it is these days. Nothing. Nothing so special, how to say. So now I need to. What do I need to do? I need to get my wiring harness. So the Dar Burial <coughs> will be doing it in a second. That's the front face. Uh, so the interesting part is is one of these is for the reverse camera I hope it's this one we'll, we'll just play around and figure out and the other one cable is obviously for the aerial which I believe so is going to be a blot on because I have no idea at this stage, at this moment, what is what. So we've got mountain screws, bracket for the double din so it slides into there, <coughs> and then screws down. This will be for a little bit later. Then we have the patch lead. Which I believe I only I'm gonna have to use only this plug-in one because this is the new one and it doesn't go to the cables. We'll check this one out because by these Kenwood has got different things but there it says direct steering wheel plug-in so every every head unit is different and what do we have in here this is our aftermarket cables aftermarket cables so these are the other buttons and what so by the look of it we're gonna have to run this to the fuse box this is the permanent live wire that is gonna have to be installed unfortunately so fair and square plug this one in here and then this one just plugs in there. <coughs> this plugs into here. Oh, no. Like so. So, the only wire that I need to install is this big long yellow one. Right, let me find the glare fuse box where it lives in this car. And then we will continue with the installation of the yellow wire. Right, so um, what I need to do is I've decided so either way regardless I need to remove the glove box and the fuse box is just down there alongside. So for me to run that cable nice and neatly, I'm going to have to follow this path and get it in there. So the 
color box removal looks pretty easy and straightforward it's just one two three three t20s and then one two three more on the bottom so let me remove that and see if it pops out Just like that, it comes out nice and lovely. So basically, where is my big ass light? Um, so we need to run the cable from the all the way to the bottom here. I don't know whether you can see. Lord, but it is here, and this opens up, and that's when we get to the box. I'll show you in a second, and then explain to you it all. But basically, this cable needs to go from here, oh, from here, out oh, inside here, like that, and then, then, then. Cable tie along I'm gonna cable tie it straight away. Well, like that, even though I don't think you can see a lot from the dot angle, so unfortunately, I do apologize. I do apologize, but I'm going to show you everything in a second. So now we'll just need to find out which one of these pins is permanent live. And then I can plug it in, put it all away, and forget about it. Then we'll be obviously running the dabs and stuff like that. But for the time being, I will be fine. So I need to get a ground somewhere. Give us a ground. there so I'm just gonna double check put the ignition back on 
just in case because sometimes what it is um, it might be live when the car is off but when you put the car on it's actually not live anymore due to the relays and all that business but very rarely that happens but I'm just gonna make sure that everything is yeah still 12 volts still all good so um right I'm gonna get you down and I'm gonna show you where it was so so basically if we go down here so basically that's your where I removed the glove box come on focus that's where I removed the glove box that's where I cable tied the cable goes in there blah 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 from there in there then you go down this is your glove box part in here and this first pin there on the very top is permanent life and that's what yellow wire stands for in the car audio world permanent life well in these days back in the day it was actually other way around <laughs> believe me or not but basically that's the that's that part finished uh, two seconds I'm gonna bring another head unit just a random head unit and we'll check if it works randomize randomize Alright, so I've got this quite old this now Sony head unit. So just for the tester, it will do because that Kenwood one you have to literally completely complete it for it to to work. Well, I can already hear here something going on, so it should work. Yeah, it came on perfectly fine. Now I can actually try and determine whether I did it right for the air wheel um, tuna, tuna. <laughs> right before I get muted so yeah I've determined it quite quite decent black one is is the is the thing actually now let's check the steering controls steering controls uh, yeah works everything works as it should so thank god for that and now i can move on to the fees three four five six seven eight nine ten <laughs> Right, so before any further, well, right, so what we'll be doing now is I'm going to install the DAB reel, which is going to be in this corner here, and, and then basically pop this little piece of plastic off. And there is a T27, I believe, so then we'll remove more than likely this whole panel there. And we're gonna actually put this speaker, put this grill up, and we'll install the GPS cable all the way to the center of this vehicle and that's what my plan is uh, you gonna have to remove this taxi sign for five just so I can get better access to all this stuff mm. So. 
remove the center hole panel fucking boobies here for me to work around everything that I want to and so I will be here for me to put a cable away remove this part there and that but basically now I'm gonna speed all this business up get these aerials in and then we can proceed with the with a head unit Out. If you ignite him, he's a road ahead of full prophecy To be the greatest beast the world has ever seen I feed him every day like the bones clean I feed him all the hate and he grows me And he gets claws real big, pissed off quick And if you cross him, you might drop dead Metaphorically, of course, said a this or Never getting bored, loves the blood and gore Always wanting more freedom from the source They don't really understand until they feel the force Departed, if you start shit, you'll be heartless In the darkness, torn apart quick You left scars ripped, you'll be chewed up and discarded And this world ain't bright, won't accept it Negative energy, I expect it once it's in your mind, it's infectious So fight for your life and reject it You better give me space, I'm protective My adrenaline spikes when I'm threatened And if you stay in my way, I'm aggressive Cause when there's no legs, it'll kill when I'm desperate is all in so basically dab is in there as you could see and that's where they recommended me to install the to install the thing the dab uh, sorry not the dab the GPS and it just got a aluminium sticky pad top block and just so it gets a better signal good signal so I had to install it there and uh that's where it's staying then basically from now on i'm just gonna cable tie all that put all the things back in what i need to i need to charge my phone up a bit because it's dying and then hope we'll proceed with the with a head unit install finish and not finish all that and see the end result wow and unfortunately this is the end of the part one of the Sound system upgrade and uh, Kenwood head unit install. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. There's definitely part two coming, don't stress. <laughs> Just look out for it, that will be there. For the now, I'm saying goodbye and I'll catch you in the part two.